So it's been a while since I've posted a video and I've had a lot of you guys reach out to me wanting to know what was going on and just making sure everything was okay. So I wanted to take a minute, make this video and let you guys know what I've been up to. So the last couple times we took the boat out, we could smell gas fumes really strong. And after checking all the lines, checking everything that could be leaking, I couldn't find any leaks. So I come to the conclusion that it was probably my fuel tank. You know, this is a 30 year old boat. Some things like that just happen over time. Well, that may not sound like a very big deal, but in order to get to my fuel tank, I have to remove part of the front deck, uh, the console, a section of the floor, and all kinds of other odds and ends. It's a pretty big job, but I knew how dangerous it was to have gas and the bilge of the boat with pumps and everything running, all kinds of wires and stuff down in there. So I went ahead and tore in on the boat, and it turned into be a pretty big job, and that's what I've been up to for the past couple weeks. Now I was hoping that I would pull the floor up out of the boat and I would find the leak on top of the fuel tank. It was an aluminum fuel tank. But after pulling the floor up, checking out the top of the tank, what I could see down the sides of the tank, everything looked good. So I had to drain the tank and end up pulling it completely out. And then I found the leak. What actually ended up causing the leak was just years and years of the fuel tank rubbing against the ribs in the bottom of the boat. It finally developed a pinhole in the bottom of the tank. So I could either buy a new fuel tank, which was about $400, and I couldn't find an exact replacement. So, you know, I may have got this new tank in it and not even worked. Or I could fix the old tank. So I decided to fix the old tank. So after doing a ton of research trying to figure out what would be the best type of epoxy to use to repair the tank, I decided that JB Weld would probably be just as good, if not better, than any of the products out there. And once JB Weld completely cures, it's 100% oil and gas resistant. And as long as you prep the area right, it's a permanent bond. Now the area around the leak had gotten so thin from rubbing on the bottom of the boat that once I prepped the area, it actually opened the hole up to around a quarter of an inch. So I didn't use regular JB Weld on here because I figured it would just fall through the hole. But instead I used JB Weld epoxy putty, which is also some really good stuff. So I coated the area with the epoxy I let it cure for a couple days and then I sanded it down flush. And then I plated it with an aluminum plate and I used a regular JB Well to attach the aluminum plate. Now, the only reason I put the plate on there is to actually protect the repair that I made from ever coming in contact with the bottom of the boat. It, you know, it could possibly crack it over time. And before I put the tank back in the boat, I took a piece of rubber and attached it to each one of the ribs to try to keep the tank from sliding back and forth on the ribs and potentially cause another leak on down the road. So I had planned on just fixing the fuel leak and putting the boat back together like it was, but I decided that since I already had the boat tore apart, it would be a good time to make some changes. Not only that, but we were right in the middle of the catfish spawn here in Kentucky, and that's not the best time to be on the water anyway. So I ended up doing quite a bit of work to the boat, made a bunch of changes. Uh, pretty happy with how it turned out, so I'm gonna show you guys what all I've done here show you guys a finished product so we'll start up here at the front and the first thing i've done some of you guys can probably already tell is i've shortened up this front deck a whole lot i took 19 inches off the front deck the front deck's still big enough to fish off of or throw a cast net but it's not taking up near as much uh, floor space in the boat which is what i was looking for and i still have quite a bit of quite a bit of storage in there as well so since I had shortened up the front deck 19 inches, I decided that I should try to move this console forward as far as I could to give me some more room in the back of the boat. And when we're catfishing, we do 90% of everything from the back of the boat. So we need all the open floor space we can get back there. And the way it was before, I just didn't have a lot of floor space in the back of the boat, especially when my seat was in there. So I ended up moving the console forward about 15 inches. That was a pretty big job too. There was a lot of wiring, uh, a lot of cables, shifter cables, steering linkage, all that had to be moved. Even with my seat in now, I've got plenty of room for my live well back here. So since I was already this far into the project, I figured I might as well go ahead and do some work to the transom because it had a few problems. Now, as far as the actual transom board, it was in great shape. Uh, I, I honestly believe somebody's probably replaced the transom at some point because of how good a condition the, the board was in. There were some rivets that had been either cut or broke at some point. Uh, so I fixed those. Uh, I found some bolts that were missing. I put the bolts back in. So the transom should be a lot stronger than it was before. And also these doors right here uh, were in pretty bad shape. And the middle door was actually missing. Uh, 
So I made some new doors back there. They turned out okay. Went ahead and put some gray paint on them. And I, you notice I got three hatches back here. It might look kind of funny, but there's actually a reason for those. This middle cap right here, I can pop the center of that out and I can get to my fuel filter and all three of my pumps are right there below it. Now these side caps over here, there was nothing in there before. This was an empty space. But since I moved the console forward, 15 inches you know i've got two batteries in there and a lot of storage i use the live well for storage so there's a lot of weight up there i had my trolling motor batteries right on the very nose of the boat and my fuel tank kind of favors the front so i had too much weight in the front of the boat and since this was an empty space right here uh, i got me some battery trays and i had plenty of room to fit two group 29s in there so i've got my trolling motor batteries back here i've got one here and one there and uh, I put an access hatch here to get to my batteries. I guess every two or three years, you know, I have to take these screws out to change the batteries, but those are strictly trolling motor batteries, so I'm not too worried about that. Like I said, if I need to add some more wires or something on down the road, I could, or fix a connection or something, I can just take these caps off and my batteries are right there. But I did end up doing a little work to the outside of the boat too. I sanded everything down. I didn't spend a lot of time on it, but uh, I sanded everything down, prepped it a little bit, got some new white paint on it. I didn't mess with the blue. It was in a lot better shape than the white. So, so after I got the boat finished, my next project, I, had, I was planning on doing a bunch of work to the trailer. I was going to strip most of the paint off of it, put some fresh paint on it. And I was also going to add another axle to it and make it a tandem axle trailer because I travel a lot. A tandem axle is just safer. And I've also got a lot of weight in this boat especially if I've got my bait tank or live well or something there full of water. And they ride a lot better, so that's what I was wanting to do. It was going to cost me quite a bit of money to do it, but it was going to be a pretty simple job. But right before I was getting ready to order the parts, like the day before I was getting ready to order the parts to do it, I actually found another trailer, and I'm going to walk out here and show it to you guys. So here's what I came up with. I'm still in the process of doing some work to it. But I did put new tires. I put new wheel bearings in it and I put new tires on it. And I've got new bunk boards there that I haven't mounted yet, but I'm getting ready to. But it's an aluminum trailer. It's got five cross members in it. It's built really good. So I've actually got less money in this aluminum trailer, even with the new tires and bearings and everything. I've got less money in it than I was gonna have in just putting tandem axles in my other trailer. And it's a lot heavier built trailer. So that's basically what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be finishing up this trailer and we're gonna take it to the lake and put the boat on it. So I hope you guys stick around for that and we're gonna get to work. So I've got the bunk boards where I think they need to be. I think the boat's gonna fit on here pretty good. According to the way I measured it, it's a it's gonna be a perfect fit. So we're gonna head to the lake. I'm gonna have my dad follow me with the boat. I'm gonna pull the trailer and we're gonna see how it fits. to make an adjustment i put the boat on the trailer but it was kind of teeter-tottering on these rollers and i got the lowers down as far as they'll go so i'm having to raise the bunk boards up uh, one boat hold hopefully that's going to solve the problem because right now it's just kind of teeter-tottering on the trailer and it's hitting this cross member up here in the front so hopefully this is going to fix that so i kind of knew this was going to happen so i went ahead and brought an impact and some wrenches it would have been a miracle if everything just went perfect
So I finally got the boat on the trailer, got everything adjusted, got it fitting on there right. I got a few small things left to do to the trailer, but for the most part it's done. And it's almost time to get back out on the water. I'd say here in the next couple days, I'll be headed to the river. It honestly feels like I've got a different boat now after all the stuff I've done to it. Pretty excited to get it out on the water and do some fishing. But I want to thank you guys for watching. God bless you all, and we'll see you in the next one.